Why do you recommend an installation of liquid chiller plant in addition to the solar PV system? Uh, first of all, for doing a cold storage building and or ice production or snow production, a liquid chiller plant of at least a small size, if not a modest to medium or large size, is so that you can improve the high end, the high temperature waste heat re rejection from all of the air cooled units. Because, and also, the air cooled units need a, a common cascading uh, liquid temperature dump avenue versus just all dumped into the air because air has a very low specific heat water has a very high specific heat so water can absorb much more heat rapidly versus air you have to move 22 times the volume of air versus just pumping water which is much more efficient than moving air and what is the importance of the construction of compressor housing um, in order to lower the temperature of heat rejection at the air source uh, heat pump condensers for the building cooling production, it's imperative that you eliminate all radiant heat gain from the sun and as well as place all of the air conditioners, heat pumps in a common tunnel so that the airflow is significantly increased. And how about with the radiant heat blocking layer inside the roof? In order to, not only do you want to reject the heat that is inside the building, it's even better if you prevent the building from absorbing heat to begin with. Heat transfers, heat moves by three ways, convection, conduction, and radiation. So the sun is sending heat to this building via radiation. So inside the roof, there needs to be a radiant heat gain blocking layer so that as the roof heats up, it doesn't re-radiate the heat from the roof into the top of whatever the insulation inside the building is. Uh, it should be reflected off of another radiant heat gain block level, which is also ventilated. So that, that ventilation helps draw all of the heat off of the roof and so that the roof doesn't either radiate or conduct heat into the building just by nature of absorbing the heat from the sun. What's your opinion with the given roof area, which is 1,400 square meters only with respect to the total required load, which is 976 kilowatt? The 976 yeah. kilowatt load is just the peak loading. If all of the air conditioners are turned on at the same time and all of the defrost heaters are all elements are all turned on all the same time, then across a period of 30 seconds or maybe up to a minute that during compressor startup and all of the compressors all together all starting up you would see a max loading of close to a megawatt but the actual sustained load would be more like 200 220 kilowatts and that sustained load should be half of that with better insulation radiant heat gain blocking and liquid chiller plant and arranging the, the, the cooling, uh, the heat pumps you know, and arranging them in a series, a cascading series configuration versus just 100% parallel. Because 100% parallel is operating every unit at their worst performance level. So there, you're going to see a coefficient performance of one which means you're using a kilowatt hour of electricity to produce a kill to remove a kilowatt hour of heat versus if you move the performance, if you force the performance of the heat pumps into their more optimal range, then you'll you'll see a coefficient performance of two or three, which means the heat pumps will use half or a third of the energy. The liquid chiller plant it has a COP of four. 
So that will help reject four times more heat per unit energy of cooling. Okay, so it means that what you are recommending is not only uh, putting up solar panels on the roof. It doesn't make sense to just put up solar because if you put up solar on something that's inefficient, it's still inefficient. Even even solar modules are inefficient. They're only 20% efficient. So to get the most out of the solar modules, you need to make the building as efficient as possible. A, build, a solar array the size of the roof without efficiency will not 100% energize that building the way it's designed, the way it's constructed. But a solar, a solar system, the size of the roof on an energy efficient building with airlocks on the entrances and exits with one meter of styrofoam insulation all the way around the entire building envelope with the a liquid, a small liquid chiller plant with the air conditioners placed in the series cascade and series cascade groups instead of 100% parallel. Uh, so um, it means that the roof area is not a problem Roof area is not a problem. Yeah. The problem is the inefficiency of the building. That building is going to consume, the way it's built, that building is going to consume 500 to a million pesos of electricity per month. The way the building should be built would only consume maybe 200, 250,000 pesos per month. But every, every month for the life of the building. Yeah, so it means if this um, efficiency suggestion that you are including in the quotation, um, it is doable to reduce that kind of um, electric bill. Yeah, in general, energy efficiency investments have a two or three or four year payback. Okay. In general, solar has a four year payback. So the entire project will for sure have less than a four year payback because you'll spend a significant portion on energy efficiency you'll spend on the solar. The solar all by itself has a four-year payback. The energy efficiency investment has less than a four-year payback, so the whole thing is going to average to be less than four years, better than 25% return. Okay, that is all. Thank you.